so much chaos right now. All of it is just a distraction. The goal is obviously to make you feel helpless, uncertain, fearful, a future unfolding that you have no control over and that you're totally fearful of. Now, by the end of this video, you'll have different ways to reframe all of this and stop falling for the lies and manipulation. Hey, my name is Wyatt. I'm your reality surfing DJ here to connect a few dots and a few conversations all about freedom. One of these dots is Greg Brayton, who shows us how we're actually part of the whole energy matrix around us. We're not separate. We're actually part of that energy. And reframing in this way gives you a totally different perspective on reality itself. The old word observer simply has to be crossed off the books and we must put in the new word participator. What a shift in a radically different interpretation of our relationship to the world around us. Wheeler is stating it's impossible for us to simply watch the world happen around us. Very act of observation is an act of creation unto itself and that consciousness is doing the creating. These findings seem to support Wheeler's proposition that we can no longer think of ourselves merely as onlookers who have no effect on the world that we're observing. Well, to think of us participating in creation rather than simply passing through the universe during the brief period of a lifetime requires a new view of what the universe is and how it works. So each day that we wake up, we're participating in the creation of reality, not just observing it or becoming a victim to it. Now, for me, it takes a bit to let that sink in. We are participators rather than observers. And when you do let it sink in, even on a day-to-day -day basis, you realize the words okay. that you use, the um, energy that you put out, how you hold yourself, everything is actually participating with the field itself to produce what happens. And yet we've been taught that we are just observers. And really this gets to the core reason for such chaos and distraction and fear at this time. I mean, control can be maintained by blocking your natural cre creative energy. And they do that through fear and helplessness, or even better, using your energy for other outcomes, or to basically ensure you don't even think about freedom. I mean, if you never think you're enslaved in the first place, why would you think about freedom? Consider this from Mark Passio. Covert slavery is even more dangerous than chain and shackle slavery. More dangerous because people can't see it in the mind's eye. Because if you have a population of beings convinced that they're not slaves when they are, they will never rebel against that condition. We're creators, often tricked into giving our energy and time away. It's obvious the different ways we might give away our energy, like with endless scrolling, which I have a solution for later in this video. But one element that's often overlooked is the language that we use. Consider this from Greg Braden on active versus passive language. Willing to release old patterns and negative beliefs. If the, if the universe, if the field, if the matrix is hearing that, what is the matrix hearing? Matrix is hearing, okay, you're ready. And you're ready. And you're ready. But there is no outcome. When is it actually going to happen? So the universe says, okay, you can be ready and you can be ready and you can be ready. Doesn't mean that it's going to happen. I am ready to enjoy perfect health, the same thing. The universe says, wow, we're really glad you're ready. That's a good, that's a good place to be. Let us know when you want it to happen because it's not in the affirmation. I've slowly started to realize how much I give away my power in the phrases that I use and the words that I use. And I found myself updating those. And it actually had a positive effect. Now, one of the core ways out of the chaos and fear is to let go of the need to control everything and focus on what you can directly influence. Consider this from Kyle Cease. One of the things that we're going to have to learn to let go of is control. And you'll discover that in surrender, more of what you want on this planet and in your life and everything else will just start to happen. The first thing we got to do is let go of control of everything that you can't control. Right? There's a lot you can't control. You can't control what happened in your past. You can't control it, right? But you could alchemize it, meaning hear it, understand it, acknowledge that it's real, and then eventually it'll be forgiven and it'll dissolve. It's, it's not this thing that's stored traumatically in your body. The revolution happens within you. That's it. So you're thinking old school when you think, when do other people wake up? That's old school revolution. You don't want a 1960s revolution. You want a 2023, 2024 revolution. It's different. Think how different technology was in 1963 versus now. You don't want the old technology, you, to have a revolution. I love that phrase. The revolution happens within you. The revolution happens within you. I found this very empowering because it basically gives me a way to reframe everything. By limiting my exposure to all the stuff that I can't really control, that gives me more energy on the stuff I can control. It matters less what Soros does than it matters what you do. What you do is going to have far more impact on the well-being of you and the people that you love than what they do. Uh, so can they do some top-down shit that affects your life? Absolutely. 
but can you do some bottom up shit that affects your life and theirs? Absolutely. Now think about it. If we all did this, that's like a revolution in action. And the actions can be small. I mean, you could be making seven minutes worth of progress in whatever creative endeavor you are working on. Right? Think about that. Now, these micro moments when you're scrolling are something you can actually use to take small actions that actually give me a win at the end of the day. Now, it's like, well, maybe I did 50 extra push ups or wrote a couple of paragraphs, or maybe I exercised a bit more, or I, I noticed examples of natural law being violated around me and consider how that moment could be different. And whatever it might be, when I review the day, that's basically part to appreciate. Now, all this so far is great, but there's one thing that has been perpetuated as a lie ongoing in these last couple of years, and that's the divide between the Great Awakening and the Great Reset. It's the biggest lie ever told because it's it's the idea that, that we're waiting for mass change to happen. Well, actually, the change comes from our own individual participation at a small level. The mass change is not something you should wait for. There's no waiting for any of this. It's like there's all this chaos and destruction. And at the same time, there's chaos and destruction. There needs to be this rebuilding that occurs. And it's not just this one moment to say, okay, well, there's the apocalypse. It's done. You know, okay, the apocalypse is happening now. No, 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 no. <laughs> there's an ongoing dynamic. I think this idea of mass change is a lie. There is no mass change. It all comes from an individual level, it comes from a smaller level. It's like the idea of participating together to uh, enact change in much smaller communities is much more powerful and realistic than this idea of a sudden mass awakening. It's a lie that gets you to sit back a little bit and wait. Don't wait. This isn't the time to wait. This is the time to create, to pivot, to create. And let's let's say you pivot instead of waiting and join the creator economy, which you can see down below. There are some links on different ways to get started. When you do that, it allows you to take your energy and basically use it towards um, unpacking all the lies that you've woven inside yourself from all your life ups and this point from culture from those around you and so on and it's really unpacking all that and figuring out where are the truths that you can ground yourself in so that you can live a life that you are really wanting to live you're not just living blindly or according to the circumstances that are your default when you were born and all the default when you went along and so by taking and pivoting to the creator economy or to something that frees up time so that you can do that, then you're grounded much more into what you want to do. Now, this is much more empowering than a, than a great mass thing that's supposed to happen. It's like the idea of changing the world. You're not going to change the world. What you do is you affect the change in yourself and, and a few around you. And that small change does much more, much more than saving the world or changing the world. All that does is siphon your energy. For me, the more I've embraced the now, the more that I see opportunities open up to me. And part of that is falling in love with the process of liberation, the process of freedom, and the revolution inside of us than just the result. Consider this, fall in love with the act of doing yoga and the result will come. Patanjali. When you look at recommendations from top people who are in sports that are just at the top of their game, one of the things they say is fall in love with the game. You're falling in love with the free throw, falling in love with the process of creation. And that process of creation is within each of us as we as we move towards our, our individual and collective liberation. It's like falling in love with the change that is going on right now. The chaos is here, but if you fall in love with the process of it, you can see where it transforms your own understanding of life. And it, the chaos and fear and all that becomes a conduit for change for yourself and for those around you in a positive way, where you stay at that higher vibration, the all the chaos and fear and all that other stuff that comes at you actually becomes fuel for your change and for better outcomes. And part of that is just shifting to enjoying the overall process of being alive right now and be excited by all that is actually going on. And a big part of that is letting go of having to understand all the big picture and saying, okay, if I understand what's going on in Ukraine, then somehow that's going to free me. And although there might be some benefits to understanding different world dynamics, unless you can actually paint it to the smaller actions you might take, then that can siphon your energy. At least that's the way I see it. I've just found it's much more liberating to 
do the small actions that you can influence. The more of us that embrace those small actions, pivot into the ongoing change, more solutions will be crafted from that experience. It, it just becomes opening up to infinite possibilities rather than being manipulated and giving away your life energy to create basically the opposite of freedom. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.